तो वाई पी टू प्रोग्रामिंग द पर्पज ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग इज टू क्रिएट सॉफ्टवेयर एप्लीकेशन एंड द पर्पज ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर एप्लीकेशन टू परफॉर्म डिफरेंट टास्क वी यूज वर्ड एप्लीकेशन फॉर क्रिएटिंग एंड प्रिंटिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्स एंड वी यूज गेम एप फॉर एंटरटेनमेंट पर्पज and if we talk about the social media apps we use them for sharing our pics and videos right so all together we can say that all of these apps are working on some data if we talk about the word application so here the data is the text we are changing the text we are editing the text we are printing the text right if we talk about the game application let's take a particular game app say if we talk about the subway surfer what we do in the subway surfer game there is a runner we are running we are moving left we are moving right so all of these are data we are collecting coin this is also data we are jumping on a train this is also data right so this app is working around this data now if we talk about the social media apps if we talk about the instagram app now what do you do in the instagram app so we upload a post we give some comment or like on a post right so all of these are data how many people you are following this is also data how many people following you this is also data and if we talk about a banking app what would be the data in a banking application account balance is the data our user id password this is also data how much amount we have credited how much amount we have debited how much uh, how much amount we have transferred to some other account so all of these are data when we are creating a banking application we have to work around on this kind of data right so every application this way or the other way work on some data right so we can say that Uh, the purpose of software application is to accessing processing analyzing storing the data related to a particular task for which this application has been created right so before we start programming we must understand what is this data so uh, if you talk about the data data is raw fact and figures so the numbers text pictures graphs videos audios all of these are data but this data are called raw facts and figures why this is called raw fact and figure uh let's take an example say if we talk about some name so this is a data if we talk about some amount this is also data if we talk about a number this is also data so all of these are data but this data is not making any sense but if i say this is the account number of krishn kumar and this is the amount he is debited now this data is making sense now this data has turned into a meaningful information so the data doesn't make any sense until we put the data in a format or in a way that it has a meaning right i hope you have understood what is this data now let's understand the basic data that we use in python so basically we use text and the numbers in python so if we talk about the text so text means collection of characters it could be alphabet it could be number it could be symbol right so if we take only the numbers this is also text if we take symbols that is also text if we take the mixture of the numbers letters and symbols that is also a text right and if we talk about the numbers there are three kinds of numbers whole numbers decimal point numbers and the complex number we have studied this complex number in schooling uh, we have seen that a complex number has two parts one is the real part and one is the um imaginary part we have seen that i is used for imaginary part but here in python we use j for imaginary part So two and three is the real part, and J is the imaginary part, right? So this is a complex number. So all of these numbers are used in Python. Now I have just told you that uh, numbers are text. That means these numbers should also considered as text. Then why we have put all of these numbers in a separate category as numbers? To understand this, let's take an example. Say uh, we have a salary of an employee, and we have to give ten percent of this salary as a bonus to that employee, right? if this is a number then we can calculate 10% of this number and uh, we can find what is the bonus of this employee right but if this is a text we cannot perform calculation so this is the difference between the text and the numbers we can perform calculation on the numbers but we cannot perform calculation on the text right but how would we identify if it is a number or it is a text put the text in a single quote or the double quote or even we can put it in a triple quote also so if a number is enclosed in single quote or double quote that means this is a text otherwise it is a number right so here see in this example this is a number because this is not enclosed in any uh, single quote double quote or triple quote that's why this is a number but if i put this text say in a, in a single quote now this has become a text right so in python we put all the text in single quote or the double quote right so anything that is enclosed in single quote or double quote or triple quote is a text in python 
right now there is one more data that is boolean let's say while filling a form you are asked whether you are eligible for a post or not now there is only two answer of this question whether you are eligible or you are not if you are eligible you can write yes if you are not eligible you can write no right so if the data has only two values either yes or no then that kind of data is called boolean data so in python there are two values for boolean data true and false true means yes and false means no right and one is referred as true and zero is referred as false uh, in programming right so this is the basic data that we use in python now in python all of these data are considered as an object so here this name is also an object this number is also an object these uh, true and false that means this boolean data is also an object everything is considered as an object in python if all of these are object that means they must have some class just like in real life example say uh, if you talk about bike bus scooter car all of these are different object but all of these are come under in the same class that is vehicle in the same way if we talk about this object all of these are different objects but all of these are text because all of these objects are enclosed in double quotes that's why these all are text and the text object in python comes under string class right so all of these are string here you can see this number is enclosed in double quote that's why this will come in a string right and if we talk about the whole number the whole numbers are of integer class if we talk about the decimal point number they are of float class and if we talk about the complex number they are of complex class right and the boolean values are of class bool right so these are the data now there is one more class that is none class none class means there is absence of object means absence of data right now to understand this let's take an example say an employee has joined today now we have to fill his details uh, like name father's name mother's name date of birth the designation so we have all of this information and we are filling now we have to fill his employee id too but we right now we don't have any employee id because there is a rule in the company that we will get employee id after 15 days of joining right now this employee has joined today uh, right now we don't have any employee id so we have to leave uh, the employee id blank now we can say that this employee id is of none type that means there is a absence of data so uh, here the employee id is of type none right now i hope you have understood what is this data what are these objects and the classes now let's take an example say we have to create a program to store the details of an employee say we have to store the name age of uh, designation or the salary of the employee right now we have this data and we have to store it so that we can further work on this data now how would you store this data in memory now to store the data in memory we use variable so variable is a name of a memory location where we store our data right now to store this data we have to create a variable so how would we create a variable now to create a variable first we have to give a name to a variable we can give any name to a variable then we use equal to sign and then we use the data that we want to put in this variable right so this is how this data will get stored in the memory and the name of that memory is the name that we give to this variable right now to store this name let's create a variable say uh, we use the variable name as name because this is a name so that's why we are taking a name as a variable name right now this is how we will store this name now to store this age again we create a variable so we here use the age as a name so we use such names that will identify the type of data that is stored in this variable so here we can see that this variable name identifies that this variable contains the age of a person and here this contains on the name of a person right so we should use uh, names that is related to the data right now here this is the designation of the employee so we can use designation as a variable name and to store the salary of the employee we can use salary as a variable name now there is a one more data that we have to store whether this employee is eligible for bonus or not so for this we can create variable as is bonus and we can put a bool data in this variable right this bool data means this employee is eligible for bonus right now you can see that i have used underscore in this variable name that means can we use any symbol in variable name no we cannot use any symbol in a variable name there are some rules uh, that we have to follow while giving a name to a variable so what are that rules uh, first is that we can put letters numbers underscore in a variable name 
but other than these three we cannot use right also a variable name must start with the letter or we can also start with the underscore but we cannot start a variable name with a number it will give an error right and also the space are not allowed in a variable name whenever we have to put space in a variable name we can put underscore just like this here i have put this underscore right and we also cannot use keywords as a variable name so we will learn about the keywords when we do programming but till then you can understand that keywords are the reserved words in python so we cannot use that words as a variable name now let's get to pycharm and understand these variables and data types with the help of an example now let's say we have to create a program to store the details of an employee so we know that variables are used to store the details of an employee let's create first variable say e name we can give any name to a variable but we must follow the rules we cannot start a variable name with a number and we cannot use any other character other than the alphabet numbers and underscore and we cannot use space in a variable name right so we have to follow these rules now we put equal to sign and then we can put the data say the name is krish kumar right now let's say we have to store the employee code so for this we use the variable name e code uh, let's say the e code is 101 and we have to store the salary salary is in decimal point so let's say salary is this and we have to store whether he is eligible for bonus or not for this we create a variable is bonus right and here we store the value true that means he is eligible so this is the data that we want to store now this data has get stored in the memory right now if we print this data we can see that we have got no output that means these variables are used to store the data in memory these are not used to display on the screen so to display on the screen we use print function now i'll tell you about the functions later but till then you can understand that these functions are used to display data on the screen so whatever data we put in these round brackets that data get displayed on the screen right say if we want to print string data we have to put in double quote or the single quote let's say i want to print hello if we put integer data we can put it without quote or say if we put floating point number right we can also put it like if say i want to display the boolean value so we can put it like that now if we run this now we can see that we have four print statements and also we have four statements get printed on the output screen right now you can see all the data get printed but let's say if i put this integer data in double quote let's say i put this floating value in single quote and here i am also putting this boolean value in double quote now if we run this i'll get the same output there is no difference because now this boolean and these numbers have become a string so now string can also get printed on the screen right now let's say here i am putting some expression say 4 plus 5 now if i run this you can see that in the second statement we have got 9 that means interpreter will add these and then print function print that result on the screen right but if i put this expression into a double quote now if we i run this this will get printed as it is because this is now a string so it will print as it is on the screen right and now the second thing is that we can put multiple data in one print statement say if after a comma if i put another data say if i put 45 after comma say i put some boolean value after comma say i put some string value now there is multiple data in the same statement now if i run this now the print function has put space between data if you put the data in one print function that whole data will get printed in one line but if we use separate print function that data will get printed on the new line right so this is how we print different kinds of data but now we want to print the details of this employee so we can print variables so how we print variables so let's uh, remove this if i want to print e name so we can just put the e name here right now if we run this we can see uh, krish kumar get printed on the screen right now say if i 
want to print e code we can print e code this is how e code get printed right and if you want to print salary we can print salary if you want to print value of is bonus we run this program this is how we will get all the details of the employee we can also modify this output let's say uh, in front of each value we want to display what is this so let's say in front of this i want to display this is the employee name right now if we run this we, now we have put syntax error we haven't put comma between these two objects so when we are printing multiple objects in the same print function we must use comma right now if we run this we'll have this output now you can see that before printing the value of the variable the string that we want to print get printed right so this is how we can modify the output so let's say before these value also we want to print some message so what is this this is a employee code so before this we can pass a string this is a employee code right put comma here so this is the salary salary is right say this is a bonus eligible or bonus or not now if we run this now our output is more meaningful now we can see that employee name is this employee code is this salary is this uh, eligible for bonus is true yes he is eligible so this is how we print the data on the screen so this is how we store the data in memory and this is how we print the data on the screen i hope you have understood i'll see you in the next class